into our last final draft profile. Mm. Brock has gone through a tremendous number of these. And really, as usual, Brock, uh, Yeoman's work really kind of helping me understand what's available in the draft, helping me form a lot of my opinions on what I'd like the Seahawks to do once we get not only to tomorrow, but through the rest of the weekend as well. So thank you for all of your hard work. And I know it's it's great because you get a lot of the inside knowledge of people you've seen, been around, talked to, talked to coaches about. And so without further ado, this is the one of ones. It's Brock's final draft profile. The Seattle Seahawks select. This is Brock Heward's draft profile. You want traits? Check. You want a vocal leader? Check. At the end of the day, you have to say, okay, what's best for the organization? Can you make people around you better? And can you bring people together? Every day at 9 a.m., leading up to the draft. Leading up to the draft. Well, he's Bumps number one. He's my number one. He's been my number one this entire process. This is no Johnny come lately onto the scene. All of a sudden, I fall in love with this guy. I'm enamored with him. No, Troy Fautanu, the offensive lineman from the University of Washington. I said it in the fall. I said it in the winter. I'm saying it in the spring. Would be the ideal fit for your Seattle Seahawks. He is six foot four. I mean, the measurables tell you one thing: six four, three seventeen. Where I think he shocked people, Salk, and I don't know what he did with all of his Polynesian family members stretching him out before that combine, but he stretched out to 34 and a half inch arms. The thought going into the 2024 season, as you looked at Mel Kuyper and all the guys' draft boards, Todd, um, uh, Daniel Jeremiah, who I texted after he put his out, I'm like, bro, where's Troy Fatanu? This dude was a game wrecker mm-hmm. as a as a red shirt junior decided to come back for his fifth year. He's like, well, most of the guys I talked to think he's a guard. He's a guard. He's not long enough to be a tackle. 34 and a half, long enough to be a tackle. The, gu- the guards and centers are 31 and a half. And that's why they've got to slide in. With his kind of length, he can block the best of the best, which he did. He ran a 501. He was disappointed, he told us. He wanted to be in the four nines. And when you jump 33 inches, as he did at the combine, and you move as effortlessly, I was kind of surprised he wasn't in the four nines. It really doesn't matter. He's going to be a first-round pick. He's going to be a top 15 kind of talent. Is he sitting there on the board for you at 16? I sure hope so. Mina Kimes joined Bump and Stacy yesterday. Kind of echoes the exact same sentiment. She's not talking about those measurables. She's talking about the fit for the Seahawks. My personal favorite would be Troy Fantanu, because I just think it's such a perfect marriage of need on the interior of the offensive line, the positional versatility. We'll see, you know, what's going on with Abe Lucas at right tackle is also valuable. I think he's super pro-ready, polished, just incredible athlete. I would love that for them. Banking 18 years, Sulky, on the road as I have of college football, watching, I don't know, too much tape in my life. There's certain things your eye gets used to seeing, and then there's certain things where you're like, that's just different. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand that. Let me rewind that back. Uh, whoa. And with, with Troy, that's what jumps out. He doesn't wear knee braces. He doesn't wear tape. He doesn't wear ankle braces. The first guy for me in my life who was like that was Chad Brown. When Chad Brown, the outside linebacker, DN, came from the Steelers to the Seahawks, dude wore no pads. He wore shoulder pads and helmet. That was it. No thigh pads, no knee pads, no ankle braces, no tape, no nothing. I mean, he was just an absolute warrior. And Troy Fautanu is the same way. The only lineman, and this is high esteem now, and this is why he's number one on my list, the only lineman in person that I have seen move with 320 pounds at 6'4", that way is Walter Jones. I mean, Walter was an athlete. Walter was a, Walter ran 4.5 at Florida State, and he ran 4.7. And then when he was 350 pounds, he still beat me in a 40-yard race coming off of, you know, winter break. I mean, he's just a different, yeah, he's just a different caliber of athlete. Troy Fautanu is a volleyball player that happens to play offensive tackle. And oh, by the way, that's all the stuff on the field. Let's talk about the dude off the field. When we asked him, how are you so nasty? Yet you sit with us so he, with us here, and you are so nice. Here were his words. You know, when I roll up my pants and roll up my jersey and have the stomach showing out, I think I turn into a different person. I don't know. It's it's it's, it's weird. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's just for me on the field that like, I've learned from Coach Huff the past five years. I I mean, I've, I felt like I've always had that like, you know, that want to like put somebody on their back. So I'll, you know, I gotta watch my language, but um, but yeah, like there's there's gotta be a want there, um, and. And I have that want every day that I play football, you know what I mean? Especially on Saturdays when you're going against someone uh, that's not wearing, you know, your colors. 
I so love that. It, it's, it's a different, it's a mindset thing. You, like, I feel like you, see, you either you have it or you don't. Don't cut Troy off. Yeah, he's got it. I love what Clatt said to us the other day about, hey, man, I can have my opinion. Talk to the dudes in the league. Talk to the Morris Trophy Award guys that vote on that on the defensive side, and there was no question. Talk to Jake Dickard on the other side of the mountains. Remember his comment before the Apple Cup? This is the best lineman I've ever seen. That's what I'm talking about. Like when you watch the tape and you're just like, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be a little stiff. You're supposed to have knee braces on. You're supposed to not be smooth. Some of these different humans, man, Jonathan Ogden, when I played against him at UCLA pregame, walked by him on the field. I'm like, not a human. Justin Barnes, you make fun of me earlier in the show when everything is about, you know, my eye test and everything. This is why. Like I've walked by these creatures that, I mean, Jonathan Ogden was like seven foot in his helmet. Yeah, I mean, he was just a huge, massive athlete. You're around these guys that are just different. Walter and Hutch and the way they moved. Maybe Steve Hutchinson, to be honest with you, is a better comp than Walt. Walt was even a little bit bigger. I think Walt's 6'5", and I think Steve Hutchinson would be the better comp. And you watch Steve Hutchinson move, and you watch, same thing. He didn't wear knee braces, big, broad shoulder, powerful caveman. He's like a caveman that just that plays like an athlete, like a basketball player. That's Troy Fautanu, man. And if he's sitting there at 16... I, I, my firm belief is they want to trade down. My firm belief is they want to add size and bulk. My firm belief is they want to build the line of scrimmage, and they would love to trade down. But my goodness gracious, if Troy Fatan is there at 16 and they take him, I will fist bump bump us so hard. I won't mess with Wyman and Bob. They hate that. But I will fist bump bump, and he's going to fist bump me right back, and we're going to be like two Monday Night Football helmets back in the day when they did the pregame, and they just exploded onto the scene because he's that kind of dude and that kind of fit for these Seahawks.